so good to see everybody this morning. Isn't God good to us? Come on, lift up your voice and sing this to God be the glory.
Hallelujah. He's so good. He's way too good. He's so good you can't describe how good he is. Say this after me, Lord. You are good. Your mercy and your kindness and your compassion and your love endure forever. Can you take both of your hands and lift them up to heaven and just open up your mouth and magnify him? I want to hear a roar of worship. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we magnify you. We magnify you. Let's drop the F, Tony. And I don't know what happened to my strings, but I, I would love to find them. Let there be glory and honor and praise.
take our hands and lift them up and just magnify Jesus for a second. Lord, we magnify you today. Jesus, we magnify you today. Jesus, we came to this place to give you praise. Jesus, we came in expectation for a manifestation of your presence. We worship you, Jesus. Just sing this in unison. Lord, we magnify
Can we do that? Can we do what we just sang about? We lift up your name. We lift up your name. We lift up your wonderful name. We lift up your healing name. We lift up your glorious name. We lift up your saving name. place to move. This is your place to operate. Lord, we have a hunger for your presence. And Lord, we come today in honor and reverence to you. We say, have your way today, Lord. We want your highest and your best for us. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. We're hungry for your move. We're hungry for your power and to move in this place, Lord. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We worship you and bless you. You are so good. You are so good. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in church today? A Holy Ghost church, a healed and whole church, a faith church. Not every church is like this. And I'm so grateful to have this flow in my life, right? It's come in times where I needed it, right? We've all needed it. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be here today? Well, greet somebody around you. Tell them you're glad to be with them and see them and go ahead and be seated. Good to see you all today. I want to welcome those watching on live stream all over the world. Thank you for taking time to tune into our Sunday morning service. Give them a warm welcome. Thank you for taking time. We're so blessed to have you. I know you're going to be so blessed by this service today. We have Pastor Nancy here. <laughs> so it's going to be a great time this morning. I want to welcome any first time visitors. If this is your very first time, we want to welcome you here to this church family. Just raise your hand for the ushers to see you. We just want to give you some more information about our church. Right back here, thank y'all for being here. Right over here, thank you for coming today. So glad you could be here with us. Welcome to World Harvest Church. If you grabbed a flyer, there's more information about our church on the inside of that. If you're looking for a home church, I think you found a really good one. There's more information, like I said, in the flyer for our service times and things like that. Please come back. We would love to have you. Uh, if you visit our info center after service this morning, we have a gift for you as a thank you for being here. So give our visitors another warm welcome. So glad y'all are here today. Just a few quick reminders. I want to let you know there is a prayer service tonight here in the sanctuary at 5 p.m. Prayer school will be canceled for this week because of Thanksgiving break. The church offices will be closed for Thanksgiving this Wednesday through Friday, November 22nd to the 24th. Uh, don't forget, we are having a celebration of life for Brother Gene Rayleigh. That's here Saturday, November 25th at 2 p.m. If you can make it, please, please be here. I believe there's still a sign-up sheet for them if they need to let us know. If you know you're coming and you haven't told us and written it down, uh, written it down please let us know in the foyer. Uh, we have a f some meetings coming up with Pastor Nancy. She'll be ministering. Start, she'll be starting her California tour of meetings next Sunday. So that's November 26th. She'll be ministering in Merced, Fireball, 
Fresno, Clovis, and Porterville. All of these services are going to be live stream. You can tune in. If you want to, be, uh, if you want to be in the meetings, you're more than welcome to go on our website. You can find all the directions, all that information. If you're watching in your in any of these areas, we invite you to come out to those meetings. You won't regret it. Uh, the dates are there on the screen. Uh, but like I said, you can tune in on live stream. And if you want to go, all the information, all the details are on our events page on our website. Uh, let me see here. Dr. Jerry Savelle, he'll be ministering at All In Church. That's the Reynas Church in Chino, California. That's going to be on Sunday, December 3rd at 6 p.m. So we just want to give you a heads up about that meeting. If you would like to attend that, we're letting you know where he's at. Directions are at the info center in the foyer. Uh, Dr. Jerry Savelle, he'll be in Chino Sunday, December 3rd at 6 p.m. Don't forget, MOH, we're having an appreciation night on Friday, December 8th at 6 p.m. That will start here in the sanctuary with an encouraging word from Pastor Morgan. Everyone who serves in MOH positions from ages 12 and older is invited to attend. Child care is not provided. You should have already received an email through the new MOH system. Please respond to that email so we know how many people will be attending. And if you have any questions, please come to a staff member, Brother Jacob, Deneen, let them know uh, if you need help. If you didn't see the email, though, we'll help you with it. Also, please refer to the MOH app and sign up uh, for Holy Ghost meetings, those open positions of serving. That'll be a huge blessing to us. The app is helping us keep organized, keep, uh, be efficient. So like I said, please check the app for, sign in, for signups for Holy Ghost meetings for your positions. Our annual Christmas program and luncheon that will be on Sunday, December 17th. We ask that you please bring a main dish, a side dish, and a dessert to share with the church family. We will have our regular church services on Sunday, December 24th, and Sunday, December 31st. That'll be at 10 a.m. Services on Tuesday, on Tuesday, December 26th. That will be canceled, so please keep that in mind. And don't forget to join us. We have our special... New Year's Eve service on Sunday, December 31st at 6 p.m. We will have food and games in the Hagen Building after service. Uh, if you can come to that, please raise your hand for our sign-up sheet to let us know how many people in your family will be attending that New Year's Eve service uh, and what appetizer and dessert you will bring uh, to share with the church family. Just fill out that flyer, place it in the offering bucket as it goes your way, or turn it into the info center in the foyer. Uh, if you have a testimony, please, please let us know. We want to hear what God's doing in your life. We get so many from the broadcast. I know there's things God's doing in y'all's life, and we want to hear it. I don't care how big or how small it is. If you know God was involved in that, it's important to us, and it's important to share it, right? And we're working on many ways to get testimonies out there more regularly, to stir your faith, right? How many of you have been stirred up and encouraged by someone else's testimony? You never know what someone else could be going through. It could be the same exact thing you overcame and could bless somebody. Um, so please let us know. You can uh, fill out a testimony card. You can grab that at the Info Center, uh, or you can submit it on the website. And we're very excited to announce we have started a World Harvest Church podcast channel specifically for World Harvest Church services. So, you know, we have three now. World Harvest Church, that's for our services here. Deframe Ministries is for crusades and conferences that are DM, like Holy Ghost, Camp Meeting, Miracle Crusades, and then Jesus the Healer, which is daily. So, you know, we got to keep it organized. Because, you know, with the daily broadcast, you would lose, lose, lose everything. And it, it would be so far hidden, you know. It's better to have them delegated, right? So that's what the three are. You can subscribe to them anywhere you watch. Uh, you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. So enjoy that. Uh, those will be updated regularly. Uh, and we have our trunk offering. We're going to receive tithes and offerings in just a moment, but ushers bring the trunk offering to the front. This is for uh, loose change, dollar bills. This is not a regular tithes and offering. We'll receive that in a minute. This trunk offering goes to maintaining the building, keeping it nice and clean. Everyone, go ahead and just stand up, and let's just take a few minutes to fellowship.
let's go ahead and receive this morning's tithes and offering. And I wanna open up to Philippians 4, verse 19. Hallelujah. Did you come expecting in this service today? I'm expecting God to have his way today. Amen. His highest and best flow. Amen. Amen. Philippians 4.19 says, and I'm going to read out the Amplified. And my God will liberally supply, fill to the full, your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So many times we get in this bad habit of relying on the wrong source. And sometimes it's, it's not necessarily intentional, but your eyes are set on something else other than his riches and his glory, his source, his supply. And it's not just talking about money here in, the, in a sense. It's talking about all, I mean, we have more than just money needs, right? When your body's in pain, money's not necessarily the first thing you're thinking about, but the pain in your body. There's, you know, how many times I've heard of very wealthy people dying of, of diseases that they could not pay for. They couldn't pay their way out of. They couldn't cure. But there's the only things that God can provide, right? That we can pull from, right? And as children of God, we have that source that's open unto us, right? But it says, He will liberally supply, fill to the full, every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We have to remember God is our source. I said God is our source. Our faith is on him. Our faith is not in an avenue. Our faith is not an opportunity. It's not in a person. It's not in a job. It's not in anything else. But miracles happen when your faith is in him. Victories are won when your faith is in Him. It's always victory when your faith is in Him, eh, right? So remind yourself and reflect on yourself right now and say, am I putting my faith in the wrong things? Am I putting my trust in something else other than Him? Because when we put our trust in Him, things always work out. It may not happen the way you thought. It may not happen the timing you thought. But I'm telling you right now, he will prove you wrong every time. If you just trust in him, put your faith in him, put your attention on him, he'll always provide. He'll always come through. You just have to do your part, right? It's easy. I said it's easy when you put your trust in him and put your faith in him, right? It's easy. Hallelujah. So it says here, he will supply every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So it doesn't matter what your bank account says. It doesn't matter what comes up. It doesn't matter what you get in the mail. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what comes up because that doesn't determine my source. Situation, circumstance, I don't care what comes up in your life. That is not determining your source. Your source is still intact. Your God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. So no matter what happens, no matter what inconveniences come, you can say, oh, my source is still intact. Full, completely full. I am supplied completely. And it's not because of what's going on around me. It's because of my Father and His goodness in my life and His faithfulness towards me. Aren't you thankful for that? That no, we're not left hopeless with a bad report. We're not left hopeless with debt. But God can bring us out of anything, right? Hallelujah. He's a faithful father. He's committed. We have to commit to him. We have to make, make sure our words are lined up with his words, right? Hallelujah. Life is so much sweeter and easier when you just trust in him, right? Put the pressure on him and let him handle it, right? And just do our part, amen? Hallelujah. God is our source. He gets our full attention, right? He gets all of our attention. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give this morning? If you need an offering envelope, there should be one in the seat pocket there in front of you. Make sure you fill it out completely. Text to give, text WHC to 951-900-3991. You can do online as well, uh, deframeministries.org slash give. Make your checks payable to World Harvest Church and fill out your offering envelope completely. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to sow seed this morning. We thank you, Lord, and we say you're our source. We look to you. We put our faith and our trust 
in you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you're our source, you're our provider. We have more than enough because we're doers of your word and we're givers, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we will see this seed back in a, a harvest form in multiplied fashion. And say this with me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Before we sing a few songs about the presence of God, I just want to encourage you with something here that um, one minister said it like this, I'll pay any price to keep myself around the anointing of God. I'll fly any different, I'll fly any amount of time. Again, saying it again, I'll pay any price to stay around the presence of God, to stay around the anointing of God. And I realize I'm talking to the home team here, to the family to the local church here as one who <laughs> sneaks in and out. I just called the Defrains and said, I'm in town seeing my older two kids. I'm gonna show up <laughs> tomorrow. And while we were worshiping and while Brother Grant was receiving the offering, you gotta remember I'm a preacher's kid and pastored for a while. And when I run into a place that from beginning to end is saturated with the anointing of God. It arrests my heart. It just, it's a hook in my jaw. It's really what my spirit hungers for. And I felt just a little bit of a leading to remind the family, you have something very special here. When I said a minute ago, I'll fly any different, uh, any, uh, what am I looking for? sleep deprivation. Distance, thank you. Sleep deprivation. I'll fly any distance. I'll do anything to get around the anointing of God. And you guys drive across town. It's here. It's here for you. You know, you talk about preparing a table before you. God sets a table before you in every service. And if I may make you aware of something, I personally know of ministers and ministries and churches and people that are watching from all over the world every service that you have because they hunger for what you have. So here's my word, and it's a word of affirmation, not a word of cor correction. Highly prize and esteem what you have. Honor what you have. Prize it, make much of it. And when you esteem it, and when you prize it, and when you come to every service with expectation, it's a key to manifestation and multiplication. Uh, driving here today, I was like, Lord, I'm hearing from heaven today. I don't care if anyone else comes with no expectation. I'm making up for everybody. If anybody came in neutral, that's okay. I came in high gear. I'm going to make up for your lack of expectation. Hallelujah. But you would get so much more if you would hang on every word. Your expectation will move heaven into your heart. You'll be able to hear more than is they're able to say. Hallelujah. I get it. It's Sunday morning. You know, you have clothes and cars and kids and cats and all this stuff frying you, trying, you know, just to make it on time. It's quite the accomplishment. When, Pastor, when, my, uh, when my, my mom and dad had four kids in five years, starting when my mom was 19, pastoring a church, if you're Pentecostal, you get the whole story. I could just remember my mom dressing us one at a time, and she would sit us down and say, don't touch yourself. Don't touch anything. Don't touch your clothes. Don't touch your hair. Don't touch anything. Don't go eat. Sit one at a time. So we know the deal about getting ready. So we're going to sing here, and if you had that kind of morning, <laughs> or you had that kind of week where it's just like, God in heaven, what just happened? The unexpected happened, the unexplained happened, or maybe things beyond your containment or control. You, in the next few minutes, can change 
You can change and have expectation and get over into faith where you were in frustration and where you were in mediocrity or maybe in neutral, just another Sunday in the same place with the same people. You can change that in three minutes. You can change that and you can hear from heaven today. But it's more up to you than it is the minister. It's more up to you than it is the ministry. All right, I better sing. So that's my word. Because I don't want you to rob from me what I came to get because I don't live here yet I can't believe I just said that we better say I came to hear from heaven but it starts with praise it starts with expectation Rachel step out if you want to I humble myself, I lift up both my hands, and I begin to worship Him. I worship Him.
Jesus, we magnify you. We're so grateful we belong to you today. And the greatness of it all is you belong to us. And we give you honor and thanks and glory in this place. And we're hungry, Father. We've come. We're ready. We're ready to move with you. We're ready to receive from you here what you have to say to us today. Because we've come to change. We have come to change. From glory to glory, we're changed. And we embrace that change to come up in our thinking come up in our believing, come up in our doing, come up in our speaking. We give you thanks and glory and honor in this place. And everybody said, amen. amen. Turn around to three or four people around you. Give them a great big God bless you this morning. Then you can be seated. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to have you with us, David. We missed you. We missed you. Um, we want to remind you the book of the month is our, our book on love, the great quest. Get hold of it. Why? Faith comes by hearing. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> that love, that faith can only move ahead as far as love will carry it. <clears throat> because faith comes by hearing, but it operates by love. And so we want to not, if we're faith people, we can't just say we're faith people. We say we're love people. Amen. And so we want you to get hold of that book. If you have it at home, pull it out and read it this month. We're reading it together as a church family. And uh, if you don't have it, go back out and get it. Hallelujah. Turn with me, if you would, this morning in your Bibles, John chapter 17, John chapter 17. This passage, if you ever wanted to hear Jesus's prayer life, this chapter will, will show it to you. So we see this entire chapter, Jesus is talking to his father. What did that sound like? Verse one, we'll start. John 17, verse one, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now notice he recognizes the hour of him paying the price is there. It's upon him, but he's not thinking about the hardship of the hour. He's thinking of the fruit and the reward coming out of that coming out of that event. Yes. Um, this is where many, many times we, if I, if I could say this, make it hard for ourselves by looking at what's opposing instead of what we're passing through to get to the other side of what's on the other side. Jesus talked about what was on the other side of this event. Amen. Verse three. I love this. I love this verse. He said, and this is eternal life that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Eternal life was for this, so we would know him. This was the whole purpose. He said, I'm at the hour now to pay the price so that they can have eternal life. And the reason for eternal life is to know him. It's to know him. It's Thank God in the knowing we have things, yes. but the having of the things he gives is no substitute for the knowing of him himself. Amen. I didn't get saved to have a ministry. I got saved because I wanted to know him. And out of the knowing a ministry came. You understand that? Um, in thinking about this, that eternal life is to know him. You have to be like him to know him. And he made us like him. Spirit beings made in his image. Um, and in thinking about this, that when my husband and I met, um, You've heard a little bit of our story. 
It was rather unique. Um, don't try to duplicate it, replicate it, or imitate it. <laughs> because it was unique. And uh, God did it. And people will try to say, well, I'm going to have something like that. No, you need to have something like what God puts together for you. But um, we met and um, I had just come out of an engagement and I, um, I was not interested in anything else. And I went to a meeting with my brother and uh, that night uh, a man was in the service. He was not conducting it, but he was a friend of the man conducting it. And uh, this man by the name of Ed Dufresne came walking out. And that's the first time I saw him. And uh, the, the man that was conducting the service had taught and was a, did a wonderful job teaching. Then he called for a healing line. And there were probably about five, 600 people in the building that night. And I would say uh, around 100 or so, they filled up the whole front for a healing line. And this man was going down one at a time and praying a long prayer over everyone. And I did what you would do. I'd think, oh my gosh, we're going to be here all night. <laughs> That's what I thought because of the pace he was going. And I thought some of these people need to sit down or he needs to speed up. One of the two. <laughs> Something real spiritual like that, you know? <laughs> and I think this man realized he had bit off more than he could chew himself there for a moment because he said, I'm going to call somebody else up here who has an anointing for healing uh, and they're going to help lay hands on the sick. And so he called up this man by the name of Ed Dufresne. I'd never seen him. I'd never heard of him. Um, but uh, evidently he had the same thought I had <laughs> because the preacher was starting at that end and Ed Dufresne started this end and he just started boom, 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 boom. And I mean, they're just flying and falling. I go, now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's how you move it along right there. Just move it along. So he got my attention just because I go, yeah, yeah. Your, your pace is what the rest of us are thinking about. And so um, I was introduced to him briefly in the back room. And um, to make a long story short, uh, two weeks later, he called me. Um, there, that, that minister's wife lied and got us together. And you say, did God use it? Evidently. <laughs> and so anyway, um, we came, he started calling me two weeks after we met. And our relationship began on the phone. It did not begin in person necessarily. We did not have, they, they sat us tr strategically together. We were at, there was uh, two nights of meetings and uh, afterwards, they invited us to, to the restaurant, and they sat Ed and I next to each other. And, you know, I was oblivious. I didn't realize <laughs> they were trying to set up anything. But um, we did not talk to each other. It's like he didn't talk to me, I didn't talk to him, and that was great. <laughs> I was not interested. And so... Um, Anyway, this preacher's wife was the one that had, you know, been playing matchmaker and she kept calling it and said, you need to call Nancy. And she kept saying, you know, since she'd call me and say, Ed's going to call you. And she just called, she's just, she's just burning Ma's, Ma Bell's line up going back and forth between the two of us. So at two weeks, he called me. And the interesting thing is we could talk on the phone. We didn't talk well in person. But we talked good on the phone, and that was a help, you know. <laughs> and so uh, the first time he called me, he said, um, I was down in Texas at the time, and he said, tomorrow's my birthday, and I thought I would fly out tomorrow and spend the day with you on my birthday. And I thought, oh, no, oh, no, shoot, no. <laughs> Why? Because I knew we didn't talk in person. <laughs> Let's keep this on the phone. <laughs> But there, there came, he, he did come out, and three weeks later, we were married. And he was in Europe 
for nine days of those three weeks that we were in communication. So, I mean, I saw him like five or six times from the time I met him to the time I married him. Yet, no, I could not spell his name any better than you could. <laughs> but God put all that together. The first thing that drew me was one thing, enjoyment. I enjoyed him. We enjoyed talking together. The thing that I, I wasn't drawn by a ministry. I wasn't drawn by anything other than this. I just knew I enjoyed being with him and I wanted to be with him more. When I first started communicating with him, of course, I was not in love with him. I didn't know him. But enjoyment became love. But it didn't start out with love. It started out with enjoyment. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I want you to know the thing you must guard more than anything else in this life is your enjoyment of God. Yes. Your enjoyment. He is our father to be enjoyed. And what kind of a marriage is strong when somebody says, yes, I love them, but I no longer enjoy things with them. Now you're headed for the breakdown of a marriage. You're headed for the falling apart and the misplacement of love because enjoyment was compromised. I did not, I did not continue talking with Ed on the phone because I loved him. Because I didn't at first. I continued because I enjoyed him. I can't tell you the place that enjoyment plays in continuing with God. You can love people. We all have relatives. We all have friends. Those, what are you, what are you laughing about? Yes, the holidays are coming. Are you working on yourself? There are people Y'all are so carnal. <laughs> you know this. Because of the love God in us, we are love creatures. Yes. Of a love God because we have his love nature in us. We love everyone. We don't enjoy everyone. <laughs> That, that is, there are people, maybe aunts and uncles, relatives that you love, but you haven't seen them in a long time. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have any, any interaction of enjoyment, not because of anything against them. You're not together. Right. That's right. That's right. And when you're not together, no matter how much you love someone, enjoyment is not uh, nurtured. Right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, so stay with me as, as, as we, as we carry along on this. Um, I remember that very first conversation when Ed called me on a Friday night and he said to me, well, I asked him, I said, uh, what, what are you doing to, today. And he says, well, I had a service tonight. I said, well, what did you preach on? Ed had no titles. He had statements. Amen. Yeah. If you asked him, what are you going to preach on? He'd just describe the whole, he'd just take a phrase. He couldn't give you a title. He never thought about titles. And he, but he came and stated this and he said, faith is a fellowship with God. Yeah. And I've never forgotten yeah. it. Yeah. That was the first sermon I heard him talk about faith is a fellowship with God. Faith carries principles, but if it comes off of the fellowship flow, it's not the Bible faith. Something is going to be lacking because the principles of faith only work when they're supported by a fellowship of the one who gave you the faith. I don't know. Y'all just went quiet. I don't know if you're, if you're thinking about how you're going to have to walk in love during the holidays or what. But those who tend most 
to their enjoyment of God will find faith easy. First of all, let me say this. Your fellowship and enjoyment of God is not based on your feelings. If he feels close, if he feels near, if you feel something of the tangibility of his presence, if you feel an anointing, do not base your fellowship on that. Knowing him is not based on what you feel. It's based on the word, what the word reveals of him. And you fellowship with him based on who the word shows him to be to you. So when you go to fellowship with God, fellowship with him based on his word, bring his word to him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want you make me to lie. You talk to him using his words. But words of his that you have made yours. Not borrowed words. Because as long as they're not in your heart, you're just borrowing them. But you get them in your heart and his words become your words. And therefore, the fellowship is completely unhindered because he hears himself when you speak to him. Amen. So... Faith can be described in several ways. There's just an unending, there's just an unending definition to faith with people. But the foundation of it is knowing him. And without tending to the enjoyment of God, faith will falter. It will become nothing but rules. It will become nothing but a, a list to check off. Well, I, I fed on the word. I meditated on the word. I spoke the word. I'm looking. I'm confessing. I'm praising. All those things are components, but they are not. They are only the outflow because of fellowship yes. Yes. and enjoyment of him. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, turn with me to Psalm chapter 43. Psalm chapter 43. And I'm going to start reading in verse 3. This is the Amplified Classic translation if you want to bring that up on your device. Psalm chapter 43, verse 3. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. So he's saying let your word lead you. When... when, when his word is in you, you know where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to you. It says your holy hill and to your dwelling. So he's saying, let your, your God's word is not meant so it becomes an academic approach. It's to lead you to him. Yeah. And if in your time of feeding on the word, it doesn't arrive you at an enjoyment of him, you're doing it mentally. And you're robbing the intent of what that word was to accomplish. Um, remember, Jesus said this, then this is the Amplified, and I don't know the exact reference because I'm just thinking of it now. But Jesus said to religious leaders, you pour over and investigate scriptures because you think in them are, your, are the life, but they point to me. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. You're just yeah. checking off the, the boxes of the law, but it was all leading to me and you reject me. Therefore, you miss the whole intent of what you're studying about because it's to lead you. The word is to lead you to enjoyment and fellowship with him. Don't treat your time in the word as three chapters a day and I'm done. 
Yeah. 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 It's all we uh, we feed to know him. We feed on the word to know him. God said this to me years ago. He said, talk to me about my word. That's what a rich fellowship is based on. But the word is the unveiling of him. He is the word, but it's to reveal him. So don't cheat yourself in your fellowship with God by saying, I got my, my chapters read and never arrived at the enjoyment of him. Amen. Amen. Fellowship with God. Well, let me, let me finish reading this. Let's read again. Verse three. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to says your holy hill. This is Old Testament. We don't do the holy hill. Yeah, right. He's in us. Yes. But we could say, let them lead, lead me to you. Yes. Or to your presence. Yes. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Yes. So if we don't arrive with a stronger sense of his presence, yes. when we're in our devotional time, we're doing it wrong. Mm. We should walk out of there with a sense of his presence. Not just, I got it done for today. I hope he's pleased. Listen, God is not hard to please. He's not hard to please. God is not hard to please. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Faith pleases him. And we fellowship with him from a place of faith. Yes. Mm-hmm. Your faith is first and foremost for fellowship with him. Amen. Because you're fellowshipping with someone you don't see. And that calls for faith. But you know that that is your reward. Verse four. Well, Again, verse three. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling or into your presence. Then will I go to the altar of God, to God, my exceeding joy. He's the joy. Your house is for enjoyment, but he's the joy that supplied the enjoyment. Your job, your family, all of that comes out of the joy of him, knowing him. If that is faltered, nothing else that his goodness provides is enjoyed rightly. Now, as I said, when Ed and I first started, we first met and started communicating before we ever talked marriage, there had to be enjoyment without enjoyment. We would have never gone further in that relationship. It would have never become love. It would have never grown into love if I didn't enjoy and he didn't enjoy us being together. Amen. But I enjoyed him before I loved him. Meaning this, it's not wrong that the only reason you come to God is spend some enjoyment time. (laughs) Father, I've just come because I just need some enjoyment. (laughs) Amen. Amen. But because we enjoyed each other, other things grew out of that. Companionship, then marriage working together, ministering together, having children, training children, having grandchildren, having grandchildren serve us. (laughs) (laughs) But its beginning place was not marriage. The beginning place was not even love. It was enjoyment. Amen. Amen. 
Um, this is what the fruit of enjoyment produced. What you're sitting in began with the enjoyment of my husband and I knowing each other. Watching Jesus the healer began because we enjoyed knowing each other. All of that came out of one remarkable feature. We enjoyed each other. What's that mean? Protect the enjoyment. Protect the enjoyment of God that you don't turn him into a hard taskmaster in your thinking, someone hard to please, someone that you've got to jump through hoops and loops for. Because I enjoyed my husband and he enjoyed me, I trust. (laughs) Other things came easily. When we take time to simply enjoy God, that I'm, I'm not coming because I've got a confession list. I've got a prayer list. And it's not wrong to have those. It's right to have a system for success. But the system never replaces the source of success. And that's him. And it's not just him. It's you being skillful at enjoying him and protecting that enjoyment against the responsibilities of a life that can turn everything stagnant. Um, Ed and I protected our enjoyment within our marriage. You understand that? Many people are trying to make their marriage work without enjoying each other. Won't work. You have to enjoy each other. Protect that enjoyment of each other. Criticism, fault finding, All of that won't break down a marriage first until it has first broken down the enjoyment. Uh Getting defensive. Acting like you're on opposite teams, uh, opposite fields of the of the of the of the ball field, so to speak, instead of being we are we are on the same team. I'm there's no two teams in our house. There's one team. We're all on the same team. But you start building in your thought life. She's on one side, he's on the other, and they're trying to win their way. The enjoyment suffers first. Because no one enjoys that lack of unity. Amen. Amen. So, why did we enjoy each other? We wanted one another. Listen to that. I wanted to be with him. Um, My husband, as I said, when he first called me, I was down in Texas. I was staying at my sister's home. I was visiting them. And Ed flew in. He called me on a Friday night. He flew in on a Saturday. I was going to drive back home the following Tuesday to Tulsa. But because he had flown out on Saturday and he was going to fly back home on Sunday, I said, I'll just come, I'll just drive home a few days early and we can drive home together. You don't have to fly and I'll just come back earlier than intended. And it was about an eight hour drive. So the two of us on Sunday drove back. I was not in love with him. If someone were to ask me, I'd say, no. (laughs) but I did enjoy him completely. I enjoyed our conversations. I enjoyed where our conversations went. Um, But we got about 30 minutes outside of Tulsa and on the inside of me, I started getting sad and I'm going, I'm not, I'm not talking about emotionally. I something in here. What is that? And it dawned on me. Ah, He's getting ready to get out of the car. What was it? I wasn't going to be with him. And I recognized that enjoyment was connected to being with him. It came from, I wanted to be around him. So I dropped him off at his house and I drove to my apartment. When I walked in, my phone was ringing and evidently he he felt the same thing because he said, I'm coming to get you. (laughs) 
<laughs> and he came and got me and we went out for ice cream. That's where we That's went right. when we were got. <laughs> and we went out, we just kept going out for ice cream. He was trying to fatten up. <laughs> but the reason we enjoyed each other, it showed we wanted each other. We wanted to be together. Protect that. That's what the Father wants out of you more than anything, wanting to be with Him. Wanting to enjoy Him. Because to serve him apart from enjoying him is to rob from him and to rob from you. (laughs) Once you enjoy him, serving him comes easy. If you're struggling to serve him in line with the word, what's missing? Enjoyment with him. The fellowship has been compromised. Praise the Lord. I know this isn't deep, baby, but this is the foundation of everything we do. Because if we're not careful, our to-do list becomes our guide. And we can have a spiritual to-do list that becomes the guide. But the first thing to go in a broken down marriage is enjoyment. They quit fighting to be together. We looked for ways to be together. And that is your responsibility within a marriage is to seek those times out. Now you know what I'm talking about when I talk about it with God. It's the exact same parallel. You seek for moments away. You seek for time in his word, time to just talk with him. And it's not about performance. It's all about enjoyment. What's sad, because I've had it, uh, you get busy, you, you have a lot on your plate. And I remember when we went to the ranch one year, several years ago. So I'm at the ranch and I'm going to pull out my stuff and I'm studying. Stephen had built me a one room cabin there that's, you know, uh, a, a great little quaint place. So I'm up there and And God said this to me as soon as I sat down. He said, I've missed you. Uh Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. You think, oh, isn't that sweet? No. That's a correction. Why? Because we can do all the work and miss out on the joy of him. The joy of him. The joy of him. And he misses it when he is just served by law instead of served by love. Amen. Likewise, to protect your faith, protect your enjoyment of God. Protect your time with him, your fellowship with him. God has a family for one reason. He has a father's heart. He wanted a family. He wanted a family first and foremost for enjoyment, not so he could have bills to pay. (laughs) But they're all paid. But what I'm saying, it's not just to fulfill the provision of a father that he wanted a family. It's strictly for enjoyment of one another. Amen. Amen. This is what Jesus said that we read in John 17. And this is life eternal, that you know him. All that I'm paying for, all this season, it's now time, Father. It's now time for the price to be paid, to bring many into life eternal. And this is why I'm doing it, so they'll know. They'll know you the way I know you. Amen. Amen. Like I said, I did not, and you were the same way when you got born again. Think back. You got born again, not so you could have a ministry or you could have responsibilities within the body. You got saved because you wanted him. I wanted him. 
And the good thing is, I still want him. And I protect that I always want him. I always want him. Amen. Um, Paul made this statement. You know it in Philippians, that I may know him. After all the miracles worked, people even raised from the dead, God used him to bring revelation to the body of Christ unlike anyone else before him. And at the end of it all, Paul says, the thing that satisfies my insides is one thing, knowing him, that I may know him. Miracles, power that flows, manifestations that come are a blessing, but they don't satisfy the inside. They don't satisfy the hunger of the heart. There's only one thing, him, the enjoyment of him. Our lives are to demonstrate power. Our lives are to demonstrate the power of God. Our lives are to demonstrate that God gets involved in the affairs of men. Amen. But without knowing him, none of those things hit the target. There will always be a dissatisfaction. Power doesn't satisfy. I said power doesn't satisfy. Dominion over the devil doesn't satisfy the hunger of man's heart. It just keeps the devil off what God provided, but it does not satisfy the hunger of man's heart to know him. Amen. Amen. What he gives meets, meets our needs, but he's the only one that satisfies, satisfies our heart. Needs won't satisfy your heart. Needs met will not satisfy your heart. He's the only one. Amen. Amen. The reason many struggle for healing is because they're seeking healing. Mm. Uh You seek the healer. Many struggle financially because they're seeking provision. Seek the provider. Many are wanting deliverance because they're seeking deliverance. Seek the deliverer. It's him. It's him. Amen. Amen. There was a man who lived, Nicholas Zinzendorf, 1700 to 1760, saw many miracles, answers to prayer, and it was written about him. He said this was what was in the midst of this miracle ministry this man had. He said leaders with lesser maturity and insight might have made miracles and supernatural occurrences the major focus. But Zinzendorf did not. He stated, I have but one passion. It's the love of him and nothing but him. There's where miracles come from. There's where provision for your family. There's where guidance for your daily life comes from. Amen. Amen. Romans 12, verse 3, and I'll just quote it because we're not going to read the whole passage. You remember, it says that God has dealt to every man. What? The measure measure of faith. What is that measure? It's the beginning measure. Then Jesus made the statement in Mark 11, 22, have faith in God, or as the Greek reads, have the faith of God. So the faith God has dealt to his children is a measure of his own faith, his own faith. It's not faith that your own spirit generated. He took of his own faith and made it yours. Since it came from him, it can only be nourished with him, by him, time with him, time in his word. This is why people struggle with faith. They're trying to nourish it with their own performance, but it's only nourished by him. His word is him. Time and prayer and fellowship with him. Faith is no struggle when you know him, when you know what he'll do. For example, if you had a two-year-old, you stood on the pulpit and let's say brother Manny comes by. Brother Manny, he's He can do it. (laughs) He's capable. But this little girl never seen Brother Manny. 
And he says, jump, honey, to me, I'll catch you. And she goes, "Mm mm-mm. I don't care what you look like. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care how many muscles you got. In her head, she's not jumping. She doesn't know him. Then mama comes by, my little Miss Christina here, you know, 88 pounds and a whiff of wind come. (laughs) And that same two-year-old say, jump to me, baby. And she'll jump like that because she knows Yes. When we don't move, it's a knowing problem. We don't know him as we ought. And knowing him is a faith thing. It's a faith flow. Amen. Amen. Now turn with me. <clears throat> um, well, even before I say that, I want to remind you of the, a man who traveled and worked closely with Catherine Kuhlman. And he made this statement. He said, her fellowship with God made it easy for others to receive their miracle. What does that mean? Your knowing of God doesn't just parent blessings in your life, but others become partakers and they see what knowing him will bring. That's what we want to demonstrate. That's what we want to demonstrate. When Larry King was interviewing Billy Graham on his 80th birthday, Larry King said to Billy Graham, he said, many men look back over the course of their life and regret their lives. They regret what they have done or haven't done. And he said, you must be quite fulfilled looking back over your life. And and Billy Graham made this statement. He says, I'm one of the greatest failures of all men. He said, I was too many times with men and in meetings. He's talking about crusade meetings Mm -hmm. and too little with God. He said, if I would have been more with God, people would have sensed more of God about me when they were with me. But see, until he slowed down, then he recognized what he had been missing. No failure in any, in any terms that we would look at, but there was, he recognized that He wished he would have had more time, taken more time to enjoy God because in your own life, you can look at the fruit, but that's still not the satisfaction of him himself within. And if we're not careful, and it's good to have fruit because it brings God glory, Uh but it's fruit produced from the right flow, not from the performance flow, but from the fellowship flow. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter one, verse 26. You still with me? Okay. Genesis chapter 26, excuse me, chapter one, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have, what's that word? Dominion. There'll be boss. They'll be in charge. Some people really love that. (laughs) And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him male and female created he them and God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over everything that moveth upon the earth. Here's the job description of that dominion. He's giving a detailed job description of what they are to do with that dominion that he's given them. Now go to Genesis chapter three, verse eight. Genesis chapter three, verse eight. So it reads, and they heard the voice of the Lord, their God walking while he's walking in the garden in the cool of the day, he, they hear his voice. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the what? The presence of the Lord. God amongst the trees of the garden. So we see this. This wasn't the first time that he had come to fellowship. This was the flow of the garden for them. That he would 
the Lord would have fellowship with them throughout the day. Why? So they would know how to exercise their dominion that represented him properly. Amen. He communed and fellowshiped with man. He designed mankind to be so in union with him that man would subdue the earth from the place of communion and fellowship with him, not from just a place of I'm the boss, but I hear in my communion with him how to replicate heaven in the earth. And I use my dominion to bring that to pass. Amen. Amen. They were to subdue earth from the place of communion with God to have his plan, his mind, and his wisdom that's gained in those times of fellowship. That's what fellowship is to do. It's to impart what he has for you and for what uh, that which your life is to accomplish. And it flows from fellowship with him. Yes. It's not just a, a box to be ticked off, checked off, done, done. That we, when people struggle to believe, when I resist the devil and he flees and they have a, they struggle to believe that, that's because they have left the awareness of where that authority is most effective from, from communion, fellowship. Now, Jesus was an example. He was the first of this new creature. We're new creatures in Christ. Yes. He was the example that lived and showed. Now, if you, if you watch my life, now you'll see what the new creature can accomplish. That's what Jesus' life was. Amen. An example, a demonstration of what the life of God flowing through us would accomplish. It was not to separate us and say, see how far low you are? No, I'm showing you an example of what the life of God in you will accomplish through you if you'll follow me. His life was a pattern for us to follow, right? Now we see how vital Jesus's communion was with the father because he got the results he got and the effectiveness of his ministry came because of his fellowship with the father. Amen. Remember what he said? He said, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. When did he hear that? And when did he see that? In fellowship, times of communion, times of prayer. And then he just goes out among people and walks out his communion in public. Just walked it out. No wonder the crowds followed him because there was a presence of God around him, not because he was the son of God, but because he occupied occupied a place of ongoing communion with his father. And it created an atmosphere around him that people wanted to get in. Amen. He did that to demonstrate what's possible for us. Amen. Amen. Now, um, then we'll have one last thing here. Go with me to Mark chapter nine. Are you good? Okay. Mark chapter nine, verse 16. We'll read quite a few verses here, but quickly. Mark nine, verse 16. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he tears him and he foams and gnashes with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out. Look at this. And they could not. This is what the man said about the disciples. They could not. Verse 19. Jesus answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Who's he talking to, the man or his disciples? Both. (laughs) Everything. (laughs) He said, bring him unto me. Verse 20. And they brought him unto Jesus. And when he saw Jesus, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. 
And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. In other words, you're trying to say it's, my, it's about what I can do, but it's about what you'll believe. Yeah. Right? Verse 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. What's he talking about? Can you believe and have unbelief? Your heart can believe and your head give you fits. Yes. 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 And that's what he's talking about. He said, I believe this, but my head just cannot process how this is going to happen. <laughs> and so when he said, Lord, I, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Verse 25, when Jesus saw the people came running together. He rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? Now this is the problem of their wording. Why couldn't we? The man said about the disciples, they couldn't. They said about themselves, we couldn't. What was the problem? One of the things was they said they couldn't when Jesus already told them they could. It's not why couldn't we, it's why didn't we? What were we doing wrong? What were we leaving undone? Because we could have, but uh, something hindered our effectiveness. Yeah. Yes. If you think you can't, you can't. That's right. That's right. But don't ever count yourself out of what God's already counted you in on. That's good. That's good. They could have. And he, and, now notice Jesus' reply to them. This is not why you couldn't, why you didn't. <laughs> And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Many would read this and go, that means if I pray long enough, if I fast long enough, I'll earn something. That's exactly the way many read it. They think I've got to perform something so I can get results. He was not saying they had to perform something to earn something from God. He was talking about the results I get come because of my prayer and my fasting. What's that mean? He's talking about communion. Yes. My fellowship with God yes. is the source of why all of this happened. You can't, if you're leaving out fellowship with God and then you're going to go pray and fast, you're not going to get any results. You can walk out of a time of fasting for 30, 40 days. Just have at it. And you still won't get results because he's not talking about the act of fasting. He's talking about the act of separating himself from the world to be with his father. And the results came out of that place and time with his father. Yes. He was talking about this. You're going out and you're performing my words, but you've left out communion. Yes. You've left out fellowship with God. And that's why it didn't work when it should have worked. Yes. You're trying to do it from a place of what you know instead of a, of a fellowship you occupy. Yes. You get it? Yes. He is not telling everybody, now if you'll go pray long enough and fast long enough and afflict your body long enough. No, you know, you know where fasting comes from? A desire for more of him that I'm just cutting away things that distract me for a time. I get so caught up with him, I forgot to eat. That's a real catching away of the church, right? <laughs> I say that comically. <laughs> it's not saying if I do certain things, I earn a pleasing, yes. God will be pleased and then he'll perform for mm -hmm. me. No, right. it's that my enjoyment of him, my time with him is so important to me that I, I don't have time to go do this today yeah. yes. because I want to go spend time with him. Yes. Yeah. And then you avoid 
all these other things you bypass. They're bypassed. They're not purposefully persecuting your flesh, trying to stop indulgence. It's just all of a sudden I just got more interested in another yeah. direction. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we see this to be true. Amen. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, verse 30, the Amplified Classic Translation. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. And you shall love the Lord your God out of and with your, what's that? Whole heart. And out of and with all your soul. What's this talking about? Uh, it's, it's really talking about a, a flow of your daily life. And out of and with your mind, with your faculty of thought and your understanding. Ah, what you allow in your thought life is a reflection of your fellowship or your lack thereof. And what you fill your day with is a reflection of your fellowship or the lack thereof. I'm not saying that everyone, listen, people have, have jobs. You need to go to work. But you can keep your insides turned toward him no matter what you're doing, where you are. And it's not about you setting aside the responsibilities of life so you can spend time with him. It's about learning that these two things are not separate. He is your day. He is your day. It's not just times with him in the day. He is our day. So when we're driving to work, we turn our attention to the one who is our day. When we're on our lunch break and we can have some moments, we turn them toward him. We talk to him all throughout the day. Amen. Um, Ed and now look at this. Um, you love God first with your whole heart. Notice there's a divine order to spiritual things. Notice no needs being met or mentioned here. Yet he, he meets all of our needs, but it all comes from this place. And no one can fellowship with God in your behalf. Just like no one can fellowship with your spouse in your behalf. Ed and I did not break fellowship in our marriage. That's why we bore fruit. We protected. Ed used to come, Ed used to say to me, when he would come home, he'd say, remember this, when the kids are gone, it's just back to you and me. And he really looked forward to that time. <laughs> not that he didn't like his kids. But he was looking to go back to the place it all began. Wow. So and good. it was the enjoyment so of just him and I. Yeah. And he said, don't ever put your, he would say this to me, don't put the boys in front of you and me. Our enjoyment. Because if that enjoyment leaves, everything else that's produced from our life will break down. Yeah. So good. So good. If that enjoyment leaves. Yeah. And he always talked about, I'm looking forward to that day when it just goes back to you and me. But you can live that way with God every day. Amen. You don't have to wait until you've got all your business done before you turn back to him. You don't have to wait till all your bills are paid and all your errands are run. And yeah. Because Ed and I enjoyed each other all throughout that time. We protected our enjoyment. When the devil would give thoughts against one another, oh no, you don't. You're not robbing my enjoyment. Satan has no enjoyment of his, of his existence. It's all torment. Yeah. And he wants yours to be torment also. Yeah. He forfeited his enjoyment. Yeah. He chose. Yeah. He chose without a tempter yeah. to forfeit his place with God. And he wants, you, he wants to rob you of the same thing by offering you a job that keeps you. Your job is not to keep you away from God. It's for you to bring your... Bring him to your job. Yes. 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 
Amen. Amen. God said something to me years ago. He said, if you see some, talking about a Christian, he said, if you see someone that succumbed to sin, he said, people would look at that and say, well, sin took them out. He said, sin didn't take them out. He said, their failure to start their day with me is what took them out. If they would have started their day with me, they would have been fortified in the face of sin. And they would have easily resisted the temptation to do wrong if they would have been fortified with me. Amen. Amen. Then we'll close with this. Turn with me to Revelations chapter 2. Revelations chapter 2. I hope you're helped today. This is a, this is a, coming into the new year. It's important that we, we look to God for direction for our new year don't we? Of what we want to have happen in the next months ahead. But this is the, this is the spring place of it all. This is the watering place of it all. Revelations chapter two, verse two. Of course, Jesus appearing to John on the Isle of Patmos. And he starts giving out directions to the different churches that were then in existence. And he's saying in this passage, what has been done right, what has been done wrong to these churches. And in verse two, he's speaking of one church. He says, I know your industry and activities, laborious toil and trouble, your patient endurance and how you cannot tolerate wicked men and have tested and critically appraised those who call themselves apostles and yet are not and have found them to be imposters and liars. I know you are enduring patiently and are bearing up for my name's sake and you have not fainted or become exhausted or grown weary. Wow, they got a lot of credit going on here. <laughs> yeah. These people are stalwart. Yeah. They are bold in their faith. They're producing something and they're rigid against wrong. Yeah. Right. Amen. But at the end of saying all they had done right, Verse four, but I have this one charge. Only one thing makes all the right things ineffective. Yeah, right. I have this one charge to make against you that you have left, abandoned the love you had, had at first, you have deserted me your first love. In other words, you've done all of that and left me out. Wow. wow. Left me out of it all. You were walking the principles, you were walking in the truth, but you were leaving out the real life behind it all. What did he say? Remember, he said, and this is eternal life, to know God and him. This is eternal life, not the exercise of authority. It's not eternal life. It's the outflow of eternal life, but the life itself is him, the enjoyment of him. Verse five. Remember then from what heights you have fallen. Repent, change the inner man to meet God's will and do the works you did previously when you first knew the Lord or else. Ever been had any of them or else's? <laughs> yeah. Or else I will visit you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you change your mind and repent. Notice, change your mind. You thought wrong. It went, it began with thinking wrong. You began to, in your own evaluation, be able to perform these fruits. But he said, it's from me. You better guard your thought life. Amen. Amen. So what was Jesus telling him? He didn't this church represent him well? He said he doesn't want a church representing him that's void of him. If it's missing him, if it's missing that place of communion that the fruit is to flow out of, they were doing a lot of things right, but all those things right were no substitute for the lack of fellowship with him. And we don't want to get to the place where we have checked all the boxes out here and left in here 
off target. Amen. Amen. You know, not only did you get instruction and reminding for a thriving fellowship with God, but you got marriage counseling. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what is it? Go back to enjoyment. Yes. Go back to enjoyment. Yes. Marriages break down when the enjoyment is lost. Because if you will tend to enjoying one another, the love will flourish. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. Well, stand with me to your feet. Father, we thank you today. <laughs> To say this, we belong to you, Father. But the wonderful thing, you belong to us. That fellowship, that communion with you. We worship you, we glorify you, we magnify you. And Father, right now, we on the inside, we consecrate ourselves. Again, we consecrate ourselves to give you your proper place, first and foremost our enjoyment of you. Father, there's no threat that you make when we don't enjoy you, but we just rob from ourselves. So we thank you for reminding us, helping us in this. We love you with all of our hearts, but we will not just let love words try to substitute for the lack of fellowship. But we take our place in your presence, turning our attention toward you throughout the day. We know you're in us, but we give attention to the greater one in us. And we thank you, Father. Father, coming into this new year, there's so much that the year holds for us, but we say first and foremost, the new year holds for us a greater place of fellowship, a greater communion with you, For this is why we came into the family to begin with, because we wanted you and we still want you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing a little something. Let's just do a little something. I love to worship you. when someone starts any kind of a relationship together and they really enjoy being with one another, part of that enjoyment, it doesn't have to, when you're together, be constant talking. Sometimes you just sit in the same room with each other and you just enjoy knowing they're there. And you 
in, if you're dating or something and then you get married or even before, whatever phase of that in, sometimes you just sit and hold hands and just aware of them being present. Can I say this with your fellowship with God? It doesn't have to be filled with talking, but a filled, filled with attentiveness, attention toward Him. To just sit. Book of Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord, spend time quiet so you can hear. What kind of fellowship flourishes when one does all the talking and will not give room to someone else to talk? That will break down. I love what one general in the body of Christ years ago when ship was the way they traveled overseas and he was traveling overseas and there were some Bible school students on that ship and they recognized this man of he was a leader in the body of Christ. And so they, they were excited to find that he was on the same ship. And so they looked for opportunities to kind of sit down and question and have times that they could basically interview him a little bit. And they would go out on the deck and they would see him sitting on the deck in a chair. And they just said, he just looked like he he just looked at one spot and just never took his eyes off of it. And they kept waiting for the opportunity to kind of insert themselves. And they said, you could tell he was so preoccupied. So finally, after several days of waiting for him to kind of be out and among the people, and he wasn't, he was just kind of sitting there quiet and motionless. And so one of the students got up enough nerve and said, tell me, sir, what do you see out there? Cause he was just looking at the water and he said, nothing but God. What was he doing? He was just sitting mindful. It's not always about requests, yet he wants to hear from us. But know that part of your fellowship with God, there's a place where it's just hearing, just listening. It's not filling the space with constant talking and constant actions. It's just being present with your whole attention and affection, his direction. Practice it. Practice it. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't just think it has to be filled with a checklist of things that I need to go through. Sometimes just sitting and just sitting in his presence and just taking it in. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good. And it's so good to be reminded of the basics and of the simplicity of this life he's, he's made available to us. Don't forget why you're here this morning. It's him. It's him. Amen.